Kavati, you were saying how uh, determination is keeping our intentions above our emotions. Mm -hmm. So even in devotional life, we might have the best intentions at heart. For example, we want to get up early and chant every day, for example. Mm -hmm. But when that moment comes to get out of bed and, you know, go into the shower and then start that, we see that, you know, that determination goes up, even though the best intentions are at heart. So how mm -hmm. do we, like, philosophically, we may understand this, but yeah. then how do we practically still apply this in our lives? That's true. So... How do we practically keep our intention of our emotion? We say we want to wake up in the morning, but at that time the emotion overwhelms us. The in best intention also doesn't stay strong. Yes, <clears throat> that is the battle of a sadhaka. And broadly speaking, there are three aspects to this. One is that some of our emotions rise, they come from physical reality. Some of our emotions come from our imagination. And some of our emotions come from a combination of both. That means, let me give an example, say, that suppose I have fallen down and I fractured my hand. And I'm feeling pain. If I say, I will keep my intention above my emotion and I will lift up this big bag, I'll be injuring myself. That is stupidity. So when the emotion is arising from a physical reality, we have to acknowledge that reality. And then we may have to do some adjustment of our plan. So say, if I have planned, I'm going to wake up early in the morning. And if I have slept very late, then physically waking up early may not be possible. So when I said we keep the intention above our emotion, I was not talking about the emotion that arises from the situation. From the phys if some emotion rises from the physical reality, then we have to acknowledge that. If I have a body that is very sensitive to cold and then I want to go for Mangal Aarti and somehow I don't have any warm clothes. I may go for Mangal Aarti one day and then for the next one month there will be Amangal in my life. <laughs> uh, I'll be sick with cold. Now it is not that the Mangal Aarti is responsible for that. It is my foolishness that is responsible for that. So, when some emotion is arising from a physical situation that is difficult, that, that is actually there, then that emotion cannot be simply neglected. Hmm. So, the other, when, when I talked about it, I was talking about, primarily talking about the other extreme. Where the emotion is rising simply from the mind. There is no reality to, practically no reality to it. We have slept adequately enough, but still we feel lazy. And I want to sleep more. At that time, we just have to move on. Sometimes, one day we wake up and we feel like chanting very nicely, you know. We feel like Japa should never end. And the next day we are chanting and we feel Japa never ends. <laughs> <laughs> so, now in this case, there is no physical stimulus to this, no physical cause to this. This emotion is just rising from the mind. So when the emotion has no, no basis in physical reality, that means it's just a mood swing. And then that is the emotion that needs to be resisted. Most often, our emotions are neither of these two extremes. They don't arise only from the mind, and they don't arise only from the body. So arising from the mind may mean sometimes, you know, sometimes the child wants attention and the child falls down and starts crying. Actually, nothing has happened. But the child just wants attention. So some people are hypochondriacs. They pretend to be sick so that they'll get some attention. So that's, that's the kind of emotion which is unhealthy. And that emotion uh, is something to be avoided. By that emotion, we, uh, if we give in to that emotion, then we cheat ourselves of our potential to do positive things. Now, most often, our emotion arises from a combination of the physical and the mental. Say, if I am very sensitive about punctuality and somebody doesn't come on time. Now, the fact is they have not come on time and that will annoy anyone. But because I am very sensitive about punctuality, I become wild. So, in this case, my emotion has come both from the situation as well as from my particular disposition. And because of that, I may overreact to it. 
So some reaction may be required or some response may be required if the person is coming late. But I might, I might be overreacting. So then I'll have to moderate. So basically when we say keep our intention above our emotion, that largely means the emotion that is simply being stimulated by the modes without any basis in physical reality. So if I have decided that no, I'm not going to get angry with anyone, I'm not going to yell at anyone, and then somebody does something which upsets me. Now at that time, I cannot wish away the fact that they've upset me. And that, that annoyance, that irritation will be there. But I can, based on my understanding, you know, I tend to overreact about this. For me, this is very important, but other people may not consider this that important. So then, let me not respond immediately. Let me calm myself down and let me respond. Sometimes, uh, the emotion may determine that we respond. But the emotion shouldn't determine how we respond. The emotion may determine that, because I feel strongly about this, I will take a stand, I will speak, I will respond to this. But if I let the emotion alone determine the response, my response will be disproportionate. So therefore, I try to balance. So uh, the more we come to the mode of goodness, the more we can perceive the reality and the emotion as two separate things. And we, we can't wish away the emotion. I'm feeling angry, that anger is there. I can't deny it. But I understand Okay, that this is a situation and from this anger is excessive right now. So in the mode of goodness, we can pursue things to a large extent as they are. We can pursue the situation, pursue the emotion and we acknowledge the situation, we acknowledge the emotion but we don't let the emotion alone determine our reaction. We respond in an appropriate way. So for us to have determination, you know, it's important uh, that we make a realistic plan if in the name of being determined we start having unrealistic expectations from ourselves then it's not going to work not only will it not work physically but it will also it will also weaken our morale internally so when we make a determination it, it has to be based on uh, assessment of the reality and acknowledgement that when these things change maybe I'll have to do some adjustment so if I decide that okay you know, I want to read Bhagavatam every day. I want to read at least half an hour every day. Oh, that is a good determination. But sometimes life just becomes so busy. I want to speak of half an hour, you know, we don't have enough few minutes. Then we may plan, okay, if I can't read half an hour every day, I will read three and a half hours in a week. Some days I'll read more. So some days we may not be able to read at all. So basically, when we make a determination also, we have to have uh, some acknowledgement of the dynamics of real life and then we adjust okay how best can I execute this determination so we don't have to consider determination in terms of like I have to follow this path it's like when the Ganga wants to go to the ocean there is a path but if somehow there is a blockage in the path the purpose of the Ganga is not to take the path the purpose of the Ganga is to get to the destination so if this path is blocked, the Ganga will find some other way and get to the destination. So our determination should not be just, you know, I'll do this, 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 this. Okay, my determination should be, these are the purposes I want to achieve. And if this doesn't work, I can take this course. So determination should be to the purpose of flowing to the ocean. Not necessary to take a particular path to get to the ocean. Does that answer your question? Yeah.